The year is 1953. Christmas Eve hums with anticipation across New Zealand, a nation gearing up for festive cheer. A passenger express train, brimming with hundreds of passengers eager to reach their families for the holidays, chugs along the tracks from Wellington to Auckland. But an ominous shadow lurks, unseen, unheard, a shadow born of volcanic fury and simmering for nearly a decade. Can you imagine the excitement of those passengers, their hearts filled with holiday joy, utterly unaware of the impending tragedy? It's a chilling thought, isn't it? This seemingly ordinary journey was about to become etched in New Zealand's history as its worst ever rail disaster. The festive spirit would soon be replaced by unimaginable grief. The story actually begins much earlier, back in 1945. Mount Ruapapu, a majestic volcano on New Zealand's North Island, roared back to life. For months, it spewed ash, disrupted daily life, and polluted water sources. The eruptions were not continuous, instead, they occurred intermittently. The volcano's activity impacted the entire North Island, affecting crops and causing widespread disruption. Imagine the fear and uncertainty that must have gripped the communities living in its shadow. The constant threat of eruptions created a palpable tension in the air, and a sense of relief washed over the nation when the activity finally ceased at the year's end. But the seemingly peaceful ending masked a hidden danger. The crater of Mount Ruapapu, as it typically did between eruptions, filled with water, forming a crater lake. This water would normally flow down the slopes, part of the Wangihu River's natural course. However, the volcanic activity of the previous year had left a significant consequence. It had deposited so much material that it effectively created a natural dam at the lake's outlet, trapping a massive volume of water. Year after year, this reservoir silently swelled, its potential for destruction growing with each passing season, all unseen all unknown, until that fateful Christmas Eve. December 24, 1953, dawned bright and cheerful, but the air held an unseen menace. The dam of volcanic material, weakened by the relentless pressure of the accumulating water, finally gave way. The ensuing event wasn't just a flood, it was a laha, a devastating torrent of water, ash, earth, and volcanic debris, a liquid landslide hurtling down the mountainside. The force was immense, it tore through the landscape, uprooting trees and eroding riverbanks with terrifying power. This wasn't a gentle flow, it was a destructive force of nature, a monster unleashed. Picture this, a wall of mud and debris, churning with destructive energy, surging down the Wangihu River towards its unsuspecting victims. The Tangiwai Bridge, a seemingly sturdy structure built in 1908, stood in its path, a seemingly insignificant obstacle in the face of this natural cataclysm. It was supported by massive concrete piers, each weighing over 100,000 kilograms, yet this immense weight proved no match for the roar untamed power of the Laha. The Laha struck with the full force of a natural weapon, instantly washing away two crucial bridge supports. Can you grasp the sheer scale of the devastation? The bridge, once a symbol of engineering prowess, buckled under the immense pressure, its once solid foundations ripped apart. Around 10.15 p.m., Cyril Ellis, driving his family to a Christmas gathering, arrived at the road bridge alongside the railway crossing. He found it completely submerged, a stark warning of the impending disaster. The railway bridge, mere yards away, looked precarious, on the verge of collapse. Imagine his terror as he heard the approaching express train, its lights cutting through the night's darkness. 
he knew he had to act fast. Armed with only a flashlight, he raced towards the oncoming train, frantically waving and shouting, a desperate attempt to warn the unsuspecting passengers of the looming peril. Engine driver Charles Parker, seeing the frantic signals, immediately hit the emergency brakes. But the train, traveling at speed, was too close. It hurtled onto the weakened bridge, which instantly crumbled beneath its weight. The engine and five carriages plunged into the raging torrent, a horrifying spectacle of metal and human life being swept into the river's depths. One carriage miraculously remained teetering precariously on the brink, clinging to survival by a mere thread. Mr. Ellis, his life at risk, bravely boarded this hanging car and helped the train guard. Together they rescued many passengers from this carriage, but not before the coupling gave way, sending the carriage plummeting into the flood. Despite the perilous fall, Ellis and the guard managed to break a window, helping many escape onto the roof of the car and eventually to safety. One passenger, however, was tragically trapped by luggage and died. The other carriages, submerged beneath the river, presented a far grimmer picture. Many passengers were unable to escape the rapidly rising water. Those who managed to reach the doors or windows faced the chilling reality of being swept away by the freezing, muddy, sulfuric water, a deadly cocktail of ice-cold water, oil from the train, and sharp debris. The devastation was catastrophic. Of the 176 passengers in the five carriages that fell, only 28 survived. This, combined with the single death from the sixth carriage and the deaths of the driver and engineer, brought the total death toll to 151. The majority perished within minutes of the bridge's collapse. The sheer scale of the tragedy is almost incomprehensible. Imagine the panic, the screams, the desperate struggles for survival in the freezing, polluted waters. Even the rescue efforts were complicated. Although the Laha's fury subsided after an hour, the river continued to rage, carrying many bodies away. The recovery of bodies was difficult, extending over days and weeks, with some discovered miles downstream. The image of farmers finding the bodies in the river is heartbreaking. Some bodies, sadly, were never recovered, lost to the relentless power of the sea. The impact on New Zealand's national psyche is impossible to overstate. The disaster's announcement on Christmas Day cast a dark shadow over the nation, a collective grief that affected almost everyone directly or indirectly. In the aftermath, a formal investigation was launched. The bridge's design was scrutinized, particularly its ability to withstand flooding and lahars. It was found that the bridge design, while sound for the knowledge available in 1908, was simply insufficient to withstand the far greater power of the Laha that struck on that Christmas Eve. The Laha exceeded all previously recorded events, surpassing expectations and exposing limitations in understanding this specific natural hazard. Remarkably, no one was deemed legally responsible for the disaster. It was a horrific accident of nature at a very terrible time, a confluence of events that resulted in tragedy. But the heroism shown by individuals like Cyril Ellis, who received the George Medal for his bravery, shone through the darkness. Ellis' courageous actions offer a powerful counterpoint to the devastation, proving that in even the bleakest circumstances, moments of incredible valor and selflessness can emerge. A memorial, built in 1957, stands near the site of the disaster, a lasting tribute to those who perished. The tragedy prompted significant changes. The Tangiwai Bridge was rebuilt, stronger and more resilient. 
Most importantly, an early warning system was put in place, monitoring water levels upstream and providing advance notice of potential lahars. This system proved its value in 2007, when it successfully detected a similarly sized laha, allowing trains to be halted and preventing another catastrophic loss of life. The Tangiwai Bridge disaster, though a tragedy beyond measure, served as a harsh but vital lesson, demonstrating that even seemingly sound designs can be overwhelmed by the unexpected force of nature. The lessons learned and the systems implemented underscore a commitment to improving safety and prevention in the face of natural hazards. The incident is a sobering reminder of nature's power and the importance of preparedness and adaptation. The disaster, while undoubtedly horrific, led to improvements that have saved lives.